In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Very warm welcome to St George's. Very good to see you today. If you're joining us on Zoom, again, very warm welcome to you. Uh, a big chunk of our congregation have gone off to a retreat in Launder Abbey in Leicestershire. Uh, so a big chunk of them are away, so we keep them in our thoughts as they finish their retreat today. And uh, our speaker is uh, Claire Hurd. And uh, to remind you this evening, there is a, a very special speaker at St. John Baptist, Paula Gooder, Canon Chancellor at St. Paul's Cathedral, an outstanding biblical scholar and a very good speaker. She'll be at the Sung Mass this evening if you're able to make that uh, for the Feast of St. Luke. And now we now invite Christ to enter our hearts with forgiving love. Lord, you call each of us by name. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you lift us up when we fall. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you ask us to reach beyond ourselves. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. As we stand, let us pray. O oh God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Children can go to their children's groups. Uh, there's one upstairs uh, today. And uh, if we can be seated for this reading and also for the psalm, the, the choir will sing the psalm. If we remain seated for the psalm, that would be great. Thank you. The reading is taken from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and show level the mount and you and level the mountains I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I'll give you the treasures of darkness and the riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, and though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness, I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. For the wisdom that guides us, we praise you, O God.
Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the ways of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. What does this really mean? I have to confess that until I started writing this sermon, it didn't seem that complicated. And then I started thinking about it. Now, on the face of it, this is about paying taxes. Jesus seems to say we should pay taxes. And he has good reason to. To encourage the people not to pay taxes would be to subject them to punishment from Rome, which could mean death. And as we know, Jesus did not come to incite a violent uprising or encourage people to be killed. However, the question about paying taxes was not just a political question. It was also a moral and theological question. What is legal is not necessarily moral. What is lawful from a Roman's perspective might not be acceptable to God. The author Tom Holland has recently written a book called Dominion about the influence of Christianity on the Western world. In it, he argues that our moral worldview and values in the West have been profoundly shaped by Christianity, even though we hardly even realize it anymore. It seems so inherent to who we are. However, because we have this Christian inheritance, our legal system is based on Christian morals far more so than in Roman times when the law and God's morality were very different. In Rome, ownership of slaves, subjugation, even rape of women was pretty much acceptable. Killing people for entertainment was not a problem. Torture was commonplace. There was no such thing as human rights, equality or a welfare state. As such, what was legal was not what we might consider to be moral. Many things were legal that were probably completely unacceptable to God as Jesus showed us. Jesus demonstrated a radically different approach to people and to life. So paying taxes acknowledges Rome's political power but not its moral authority to rule. The moral authority belongs to God, which is why Jesus adds that one must pay to God the things that are due to God. And what God is asking for is of a radically different nature to that of Caesar. This is why people must pay to both God and Caesar, not only for different reasons, the legal reason and the moral, but also in entirely different currencies. The whole nature and trajectory of God's kingdom that Jesus has inaugurated 
and is inviting people to is fundamentally at odds with Caesar's. Paying to God what is God's is about us participating in God's kingdom. And this in itself was entirely subversive in Roman times when Caesar was considered almost a type of God. It's about following Jesus in the way that we live, showing love and compassion to the poor and the weak, healing the sick, working for justice. It is about repenting of the ways we have been complicit with the empire. Not paying taxes won't bring the empire down, but what will? Perhaps it is whatever brings wholeness, transformation and healing to communities. This in itself is a form of resistance to the imperial worldview and ethos, to the power structures that protect the rich and prevent a more equal sharing of wealth. When interviewed, Tom Holland said that in writing Dominion, it struck him that much of history is just an ongoing power grab. When Christians became powerful, they liked it and then went on to behave in ways which went totally against God's kingdom, the call to be servant leaders, to protect and care for all. We have some political leaders who might profess to be Christian, but introduce policies which do nothing for the most poor and vulnerable because they're concerned about losing their position, worried voters won't support them. Going back to taxes, many Christians object to paying tax, they don't like it. They look for ways to find, to pay less tax, to protect their own wealth and power. Now, many people will call this sensible tax planning, but at what point are we actually falling into the trap of trying to hold on too much to our own wealth and power? Even within the own Angl our own Anglican church, we see power struggles different facets of the church vying with each other to gain more influence and grow stronger. We are an established church. We have the right to put bishops in the House of Lords. Is this also a way of holding on to power? I don't know. Is this what, what Jesus would have advocated? And all this has left me wondering, how do we make sure we give to God what is God's? And in fact, what actually is God's? What is it we should be giving? The image on the service sheet is of a coin in a human hand. And when Jesus looks at the coin, he points out Caesar's face and says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. But as Debbie Thomas writes, if we think about people, if we think about our hands, from the opening chapters of Genesis, we know that as human beings, we are created by God and we bear God's image. God's likeness is stamped into us and upon us. God's signature is written across our very beings, which means if we keep the analogy going, that we owe God everything, our whole and entire selves. Any fantasy we might have of dividing up the secular and sacred is simply that, a fantasy. We cannot separate Caesar's realm from God's realm when everything, everything belongs to God. So maybe what this means is that following Jesus is not something we can do half-heartedly. It involves a recognition that all we have and all that we are belongs to God. And then it involves the willingness to offer everything. Now, in some ways, this can feel incredibly daunting. Offer our whole selves to God? Really? Everything? Might sound rather hard work. We might not be sure we really want to. But let's think about this another way. If we are created in God's image, made by God, then every one of us is a unique, incredible individual made for relationship. Being made in the image of a Trinitarian God 
is being made to be unique at the same time as lovingly related to people and the world around us. In short, being who God made us to be is being the very best version of ourselves, truly expressing who we are and doing that in relationship to others. Now that doesn't sound so bad. But to become our true selves, to become, this might involve letting go of some of our behaviours and other stuff that gets in the way. What do we need to put down or walk away from? Are there areas of our lives which we sense blocking our calling to be better, more compassionate and more loving? Now, this will be different for every single one of us and involves questions not only about money and what we do with it, but also about how we use what power we have, how we vote, how we spend our time, even how we use our voices and what we say. In short, this is about our entire lives. There is nothing that we are and nothing that we own, which isn't from God. So how can we give to God what is God's? Perhaps we can do it by opening ourselves up to his unending love and compassion, and then following where he leads. We stand to declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. We give thanks and pray for all who have the courage to speak out boldly for the gospel for holy men and women who stand for justice and freedom. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are working for peace in our world, for all who stand up for the exploited or the underdog. We pray for ecologists, for all who work on the land, for all researchers and scientists searching for a cure for COVID. We pray for those who have been cheated out of their land by economic powers. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all who share their lives with us and for those who are dear to us. We pray for a spirit of good neighbourliness in our communities. May no one be neglected or forgotten. We pray for those who are estranged from their loved ones and friends. We pray for the building up of community life. We give thanks for the lunch club in this community, offering a, a phone call and food to those most isolated and vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the Queen. We pray for her Parliament, for our Prime Minister. We pray for those who work in the Cabinet, for our local MPs and Mayor. 
and local councillors, praying for wisdom as they make very difficult decisions. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those on our hearts this morning, we include those who need your healing touch, Harold Carter, Shelley Miller, Amber Sinclair, Maria Cariotti, Pat Turner, Ray Von Drill, Vanessa Riley, Margaret Neal. Lord, in your mercy, for the recently departed and for those who grieve, for Serena Janssen's Jean Root, and at the anniversary of Joan Cook, Alfred Simons, Winifred Dunning, Gordon Hamilty Fairley, Dorothy Nicholl, and Valerie Merchant. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for the peace. Jesus said, love one another. As I have loved you, so are you to love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer one another contactless signs of peace. Please stand for the peace. Please stand for the peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. From sunrise to sunset, this day is holy. For Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people. Gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Our Lady, St. George, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive them. Only say the word.
Let's us pray. We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast, for here we have received you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace. And here a pledge of future glory is given, where we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out from the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Do please be seated for a few minutes, which you can find in your notice sheet. Again, remember, Paula Gooder tonight, 6.30, St. John the Baptist, really an outstanding scholar and a great speaker. There's an All Saints All Age service here in a couple of weeks, 1st of November. Uh, do come to that, 10.30. And there's also the same day, the All Souls Requiem Mass. It's a beautiful service. There will be a choir. Um, and if you would like names read out of those who have gone before us in the faith, uh, do let the parish office know. So do send uh, uh, those details there. But do come along to that service, 6.30, uh, 1st of November. For those who knew Serena Jansen's uh, funeral is on the 27th of October, Tuesday, so at 2.30, there's very limited space here, but the service will be streamed on Zoom. So if you'd like to join, uh, do let the parish office know and we'll send out links for that. This week we had a wonderful talk by a rabbi and we were in a sort of, a, I, I was in a sort of conversation with him uh, discussing faith and he was wonderfully wise and interesting and kind and humble and just, uh, a great start to the course of exploring faith. Um, this week we have uh, Yunus Dudwala, uh, a Muslim uh, lead chaplain at uh, a Bart Hospital. And so we'll be again in a, in a conversation with him Tuesday evening, seven o'clock this week. I know it was 7.20 last week, but this week coming, it's seven o'clock. Do join us for that. I think the talk is available, but like this week's one on, on YouTube, but I think you need a code to get it. So we'll send that out in, in the coming days. Also this week, we had the wonderful uh, 25th anniversary music soiree as we celebrated Andrew's uh, anniversary of us. Um, this is, um, uh, it was wonderful to have live music and we had a very, as, as about as full as church as we were, you know, possible able to have. Uh, it was a great evening. Andrew, would you like to say a couple of things? I was really touched by your generosity you have shown me. And, and looking forward to using my Wigmore Hall vouchers when things open up again. And last Thursday, it was a real pleasure to make music together amongst so many friends and particular thanks to Joy and Jenny and all the choir, thank you. Thank you all. And Andrew, um, heart, heartfelt thank, thanks for 25 years of, of ministry with us and of enriching our service, our services. I think those are the main notices. We now stand for our final blessing. The Lord be with you. The Lord shield you and protect you. The Lord look upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord fill you with joy and peace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.
Thank you.